Hello and welcome to my Ultra Life. Today I'm in Singapore. And behind me is the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. And on the 57th floor is an infinity pool as well as three high-end restaurants and a nightclub. It's really an amazing facility. And behind me, across the bay, just up the Singapore River, is the heart and soul of Singapore. So let's go running through Singapore. So Singapore is a, an island city-state. So the, the country of Singapore is the city of Singapore. And it's all on one island. And what makes Singapore really unique is that over the last 50, 60 years, the island has grown its footprint by over 50 square miles. So all this land that the Marina Bay Sand sits on and, and, and a lot more of Singapore is on what they call reclaimed land. So I don't know how you reclaim the land from the ocean, but that's what they do. They, they uh, you know, dike off an area, they start filling it full of rocks and sand, and uh, they basically fill in the area that was once the sea. So because Singapore is really the gateway to Southeast Asia, you have a real mix of Chinese and Malay and Indians and Tamils and Javanese. It's really been a melting pot for, for centuries. And uh, they even have five official languages in the, in the city. This city is now the size of five million people. Behind me is the symbol of Singapore, the Mer Lion. And uh, I'm glad I'm here early because in about an hour this place is going to be swamped with uh, Chinese and Japanese tours. Uh, but the Mer Lion you can see is half fish and half lion. Uh, this is because early days this was a Javanese fishing village. I believe the name was Tamask. And, uh, and then later an emperor came through and he saw, he, the legend has it, that he saw a lion on the banks of the Singapore River. So they named it Supra, uh, Supra, Supra something, uh, and, which means lion. And so they called it Lion City. So the Mer Lion blends the, uh, the old fishing village symbol with the lion of Singapore, the lion city. Uh, and so the Mer Lion is the symbol of Singapore. Behind me is the National Gallery of Singapore. In Singapore, especially this part of Singapore, we'll see lots of colonial buildings. That's because uh, Singapore was a British colony. Uh, and it got its independence from Great Britain in uh, 1957, along with Malaysia. Malaysia and Singapore was all one country for a short time. Uh, until eight, 1963, Singapore had a difference of opinion with Malaysia and split off as its own uh, sovereign nation. Uh, and just above, beyond the, uh, the uh, art museum there is this uh, hovering dome. Uh, no UFOs have not landed in Singapore. That dome is over their Supreme Court. I, I guess it's maybe the halo of justice? I don't know, maybe we might see it from a different angle later. We're running along the Singapore River here, uh, which really lead, leads to the heart of old Singapore. That's Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles, who on that location landed in, on the Singapore River January 28th, 1819. And uh, he was known to have said that uh, he's, not, he's founding Singapore not for territory, but for trade. And his goal was to make Singapore a great emporium of worldwide uh, trade. And uh, I would say he lived up to that goal for sure. The buildings across the way were all uh, warehouses. These, there were docks here, hundreds. This was really the port of Singapore in the 18 and 1900s. And so small ships would make their way up the river. So the Chinese were on this side and the Indians were over here on this side. And the Chinese selected this part of the river because it has kind of a bow in it. 
and they said it's like the belly of a carp fish and the belly of a carp fish the sh that shape is very auspicious so they felt that if they set up on this side for their trading it would be very prosperous and it appears that the Chinese were correct because right behind them is today's financial district so uh, I guess they were right I made my way a little further up the river and behind me is Clark's Key another uh, trading area you'll see lots of buildings built uh, right next to each other these were all warehouses and trading areas. Uh, the, the small boats pulled right up to the docks here on the river. And uh, today, Clark's Key is uh, all restaurants. Uh, nice dining uh, by the river. This place behind me with the colorful window shutters was the police station and local jail. Uh, in World War II, Singapore was occupied by the Japanese and uh, they took over this building so it was rumored that there was torture and whatnot going on during the during the World War II. Today it is a uh, colorful building. Today it is a uh, government office for the culture and ministry of youth. A run through Singapore wouldn't be complete without a stop at the Raffles Hotel which appears to be going under renovation right now, but it's still, uh, still it's quite beautiful. And uh, the Raffles Hotel is of course the home of the Singapore Sling and the Long Bar, uh, which is also under renovation. Uh, but it's a beautiful example of a old colonial building and uh, what one thinks of old Singapore. Well, I made my way back to Marina Bay, so that wraps up our, the run. Thank you for joining me for running through Singapore. I have had an ultra life day, and I hope you do too. With its stunning views from the 57th floor, the infinity pool at the top of Marina Bay Sands is worth the price of admission. It's got to be one of the best selfie spots in the world.